unfortunate effects on allergens in carrots and apples. First time for me to be in Ottawa, and I really like uh, the city as I had only two hours to see it, but what I saw was really interesting. Um, the Paul Ehrlich Institute, where I'm from, actually is not involved in uh, the food business. We are actually like the FDA, but without the F. So we are regulating uh, drugs. And uh, because we're kind of a bit different here uh, as an institute, I'd like to give you a brief um, understanding of what we're doing. First of all, um, it's very close, our institute, to Frankfurt, actually about 10 kilometers south. And uh, the task of our institute is marketing authorization for biologicals uh, that are used as medicines for human and veterinary use. And uh, these include vaccines and blood products, sera antibodies, advanced therapeutic uh, medical products, but also test and therapy allergens. And of course, there's uh, additional work that we do on approvals of clinical studies, scientific advice and inspection of the companies, and uh, which is also quite unique in, in Europe is that we have official batch release of the, of the products of the batches, for example, for allergens. Um, accompanying our regulatory framework, we are also doing research at the Paul Ehrlich Institute, uh, majorly on quality, safety and efficacy of biomedicines, so also on the development of experimental vaccines, therapies, and, and uh, novel diagnostics and, and other work. And uh, in the Division of Allergology, our work uh, under the lead of uh, Stefan Fietz has been for about 15 years on the molecular basis of allergenicity, um, the use of single allergen components for improvement of diagnosis in allergy, <laughs> Uh, novel strategies for uh, specific immunotherapy in allergy and also preclinical allergy models. So with all of this work, there's always allergens that we are working as a central uh, molecule. Um, that's why we are identifying and characterizing those allergens, also quantifying them and the allergenic sources, and use those information for uh, allergenicity assessment of especially foods because our, our major research area is in the field of food allergens. So um, about <coughs> this talk now, why studying the allergenicity of apple and carrots? I'd like to draw your attention first of all on the general prevalence of food allergy in Europe or the United States. It's actually estimated, so we don't have that hard data. Um, there is new data coming out, but those data are estimated uh, between 2 and 4 percent. And um, a review within the uh, project Europreval, especially here, the data on fruits and vegetables showed that there's maybe between 1.4 and 4.3% uh, of um, the population being allergic to fruits and vegetables. And here's a recent review uh, that has been published last year um, using skin prick data and, and oral food challenge data that suggests that there might be an allergy or sensitization between approximately one and three percent. Now, for, aller for allergy to apple, uh, we know from also from Europe, Preval, this big uh, European um, study, that apple is the fourth common of 24 investigated foods. And uh, from earlier publication, uh, we also, we are kind of in the range of two percent of the population in the northern and Central European uh, countries. With carrot allergy, it's quite similar. It's not that frequent, but uh, it's estimated that approximately 25% of the of, of the food allergics are uh, allergic to carrot. So, um, to sum this up, uh, carrot and apple are very frequent elicitors of allergic reactions in in Europe. And there's another reason why to look at it is because they have, or they contain pan-allergenic structures, which are found <coughs> also in other fruits and vegetables. So those two can be used as a model for those pan-allergenic structures to look at it a bit more closely. Now, most of the studies that uh, have been undertaken and published so far looked at the genetic and environmental factors uh, that may impact the, the, the composition of the foods in a qualitative or quantitative way with regards to allergens or their allergen, um, isoallergen composition. 
Those studies have been focusing on non-transgenic cultivars and they were looking at the genetic background and also the environmental factors of cultivation, harvest or post-harvest storage. So um, these studies majorly uh, focused um, on the identification of, of low uh, allergenic cultivars, um, um, studied changes in the profiles and thus um, resulted in data to um, assess allergenicity or, or evaluate allergenicity and also were done to identify allergens or isoallergens that are associated with the clinical reactivity. But from these data, we can also have an additional value. For example, if we have a gain in knowledge on the pathways of allergen, isoallergen expression and composition. And of course, if we're looking at the range of natural variation, we have a kind of benchmark for the GM lines to compare with. And this data and this information can then be used towards hypothesis-driven studies. So with special regard to this meeting on, on the um, on unintended effects. Those studies that we've seen so far, they have not been suggested for, uh, for GM lines, but we can draw this information out to be more focused on hypothesis-driven studies. Now, before I'm going into the studies, and there's a lot of allergens that I'm going to show you, I want to give you a brief summary of the allergen nomenclature that you can find on the, on the website of the International Union of Immunological Societies Allergen Nomenclature Subcommittee. And, uh, Here's the example of Apple Malus domesticus, where the genus and the species define the abbreviation of the allergen. So that's MALD. And in the subsequent order of the appearing allergens, MALD1, 2, and 3. And the criteria for an allergen is that in a study, at, at least 5% of all tested um, allergic subjects, there's reactivity to this allergen, and it needs to be a number of at least five allergic subjects that have at least IgE binding to it. Of those allergens, taking, for example, MALD1, uh, there are also isoallergens, which are characterized that they have a biological function and a size that's similar to the other isoallergens that have been known so far. So in the example of MALD1, it would be MALD101, 102, and so on and so forth. And also, if there's little variation in variance, single amino acid uh, differences, they would then be uh, named MALD1 or 101, and so on and so forth. So we see here that usually we have only little differences in identity of less than 3%. Um, actually, most of the allergens are found in a pretty small number of protein families, which are summarized in the All Farm database that you can find here on this website from the Medical University of uh, Vienna, especially run by Hamo Breitnieder and his colleagues there. And uh, if we're looking at plant protein families, we see that in seeds, fruits, and vegetables, it's uh, uh, especially the, the, the families of the pathogenesis-related PR10 protein family that we also say or call them as BATV1 homologous allergens because those are allergens that are homologous to the major birch pollen allergen BATV1. Then also there is non-specific lipid transfer protein from the PR14 family, thomatin-like proteins of the PR5 family, profilin and others. And to make this list a bit more complete, additional storage proteins in seeds like the 7S visalins, 11S globulins and 2S albumins. But because we're talking about fruits and vegetables right now, I'm focusing on these, on these protein families. Here in apple and carrot, we do have um, MALD1 and DAUC1, which are PR10 uh, pathogenesis-related proteins. They are suggested uh, biological functions are within uh, the plant as a plant steroid carrier, or, and they show RNAs activity. But there's also, also others which are involved in maybe in, in plant defense uh, mechanisms like PR14, which is a lipid carrier, uh, thomatin-like protein, PR5, also in plant defense. And what we do see also here in carrot is isoflavone reductase and uh, cyclophilin, which is a cis-trans isomerase, which are thought to be stress responsive. But there's not so much data out to, to demonstrate this on, on the allergens. So I'm actually focusing on those allergens here 
uh, Maldi 1, Dowsi 1, Dowsi 4, and also the, the, the uh, lipid transfer protein, uh, the non -speci non specific lipid transfer protein in Maldi 3. Um, the studies that I'm going to present are actually for Apple, it's most of the data they uh, result from the SAFE study, which was a European study coordinated by Karin Hoffmann Sommergruber from uh, the Medical University in, in Vienna, in which also Ronald von Rey and his group participated. So many of those data are very, uh, probably you're very familiar with those data. So I guess you can comment on them as well uh, in detail. So, and the data on current that I'm going to present there from a German study, which was from the federal program of organic farming. It was a kind of unique study because it was um, funded during the time when we had a green um, ministry uh, on agriculture and I wanted to see whether there are difference between organic and conventional farming. So um, this study has not yet been uh, published but I'm going to show those data later on. Now uh, the change or the changes in allergen composition that have been investigated in those studies are cultivar selection, the cultivation, and post-harvest storage majorly. Now I go to apple and allergenicity of apple in Europe. It's very very nice paper that summarizes that we have a different pattern of sensitization and clinical reactivity depending on the geographic region in, in, in Europe, where we see that in northern and central Europe more than 90 percent of the apple allergics have an isolated oral symptoms um, related to MALDI-1, the PR10 protein, whereas in the southern European areas, for example, Spain, there's more systemic reactions likely um, uh, associated with MALDI-3, the lipid transfer protein. Now here in this study from Bolha and colleagues, the allergenicity of 21 cultivars was assessed by uh, skin testing uh, in nine Dutch patients and also uh, challenge uh, tests, food challenge in a double blind placebo controlled manner um, with increasing amounts of freshly shredded apple. And first of all, I'd like to present the data on um, the skin prick testing. Here there were these uh, 21 cultivars, and there were a group of, of four apple cultivars with low allergenicity according to wheel size in skin prick testing in comparison to. Uh, eight, it's now it's, uh, it's seven uh, cultivars which are high, higher uh, allergenic um, activity and these, uh, these differences were significant. Not significant for the intermediates, but here we see that there's an example of Santana for low and golden delicious for high uh, allergenic activity according to this uh, skin prick test wheel diameter and um, based on those uh, cultivars challenge tests were done. And what th this is what we see here in five Dutch patients. And here on this, on this uh, axis you have the symptom score. It's highest at 100, it's no, no reactivity at zero. And the uh, patients were challenged with increasing amounts of the allergen. And we do see that with increasing apple um, amount and allergen amount, uh, the uh, symptom uh, severity increases. And the symptom severity is, is highest with Golden Delicious, which we also saw um, in the uh, skin prick test data in comparison to the apple cultivar Santana. And taking this together, there was about 30 times higher allergenicity of Golden Delicious, which was significant. Um, now, I'd like to focus on the, on the molecular aspects. First of all, on, on MALDI-1 and give you uh, some uh, more in information about that. Most of that, what I said before, uh, is summarized up here. And that's interesting that PR10 is stress-inducible and uh, there is a high diversity at the genomic level. So far, 31 gene loci have been identified, of which 20 isoallergens have been described at the transcriptional level. So it's quite a complex situation. and. Uh, this is what I want to highlight right here with some examples. This group um, presented data on uh, specific um, transcription analysis of 20 genes. Is one selection of uh, important isoforms, MALI-101, MALI-102. And we do see two different cultivars 
that there is actually higher um, uh, transcription in the Florina versus the Gala fruits, but we also see that in the peel there's more than in the flesh. But this does not need to be always the same picture. We see here, for example, for this, for this isoallergen point uh, 12, that in the flesh in Florina there's high expression. What we also see in this picture is that the relative uh, transcription levels are very high here compared to quite, quite low here and very low here. So there's differences between the isoform transcriptions of several, several hundred fold. And to sum this up, in this study, the Florina had more transcription than the Gala. There was more in peel generally than in, than in flesh. And we had the highest transcription rates in those two MALDI-101 and MALDI-102 isoallergens. Now I think when looking at those isoallergens in detail, it's interesting also to focus on this study, uh, also from the SAFE, uh, SAFE project, where uh, the investigators uh, looked at 14 different cultivars. And what they found in, um, in, in seven intron containing genes, um, they, they investigated the variant constitution, how, how the variants were composed, and compared it again to skin prick test data on those cultivars. And what they found when they, when they made the associations that especially these two isoforms, point MALDI 104 and 106A, were associated with differences with higher skin prick test reactivity among those 14 apple cultivars. This could be a hint that certain isoforms or isoallergens are very important or more important than others in, 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 in allergenicity. Now, what could also happen to, uh, to the allergens after they have been harvested and they are stored? Again, a safe project here, there were two different ELISAs developed, uh, one for the quantification of MALI-1 based on a monoclonal antibody and one uh, for MALI-3 on a polyclonal antiserum. And uh, this is the starting point after a harvest. There was MALI-1 in 10 cultivars quantified between about 4 and 70 microgram per pop, so approximately a 20-fold difference between the different cultivars with regards to the allergen MALI-1. And uh, looking at MALI-3, we see that in three different cultivars, we have about only two-fold difference. Now, after five months of storage, uh, it looks completely different. MALI-1 can increase up to eight times in certain cultivars, and MALI-3 can decrease down to one-tenth. So we have, really, we have a, a situation that's not into one direction. Um, and we, we, we should need to look at this closer in, in future studies, how this is, maybe how this is regulated. <coughs> now I'm switching the topic to, um, to carrots. And this is a study did, that we did uh, some years ago to investigate the allergen levels, um, depending the question, and that was, the, the, I think, the major driver for the sponsor for our study, whether there's a difference between organic and conventional growing. And uh, we cultivated uh, NERAC, which has about 75% mark market uh, appearance uh, in, in, in Germany. And Rodelica, which is a cultivar that's frequently used with, uh, with organic farming. But it is not very um, important by, uh, by uh, uh, the, the number or the, the amount of, of carrots produced. But uh, both were uh, grown either conventionally or organic. So we had four different profiles that we investigated, and we did the cultivation in two consecutive years. Uh, we developed a specific ELISA for the uh, um, major allergen DALSI-1, and especially the two isoforms 101 and 102 that have been known at that time, based on our very specific uh, monoclonal antibodies. And we had a polyclonal antibody-based ELISA for the quantification of the carrot profilin. Uh, the methodology has already been published, and here I'm going to show you the box block analysis of, of this unpublished data. Well, first of all, in the year 2005, 
Uh, this is the quantification data of the profilin, which is a protein that's involved in actin polymerization. So it's an important protein for, uh, for the cell wall stability uh, and for the growing condition of the plant. And here the abbreviations, this is RO is Rodilica and E is Nerac. This is conventional and this is ECHO means, means uh, uh, organic farming. And what we do see is that actually between the two uh, cultivars there's not a large difference or e even no difference, uh, independent whether it's a conventional or organic farming. And in the second year we have more or less the same picture. Uh, and also the absolute amounts of what we quantified in the carrots is, is very similar. So it's, it's a very important protein for the plant to grow and um, we would not have expected that there are large differences between the cultivars. So we did not see marked differences between the years, not between the cultivars and not between the, the conditions of cultivation. Now in Dowsi 101, the major allergen, uh, we have a completely different picture. We do see that the Rodelica, which, which is an originally a uh, carrot for, for, for organic growing, when it was grown conventionally, it had higher allergen levels than Nerac. And, and um, the same when we did uh, um, biological uh, cultivation. In the year 2006, we had a, a strong decrease of allergen content in all of those allergens and carrots. And uh, actually, the, the way it looks like here, we had a similar picture also in the year 2006. So what we saw here is that we had large differences uh, between the years, some difference between the cultivars, but actually no difference between the, the conditions of cultivation. The difference was about tenfold in, in the concentration of the allergen. Now the second isoform, down C102, gave us a similar picture uh, as we've seen before. However, the absolute amount of, of those isophones are lower than in compared to Darcy 101. And again, we had a decrease uh, in 2006 in the same relative way as before, um, which uh, the decrease, which was approximately uh, five times between the years. So I can sum up the study uh, that the studies that I presented to you that apple and carrot can be considered model foods to study the genetic and environmental influence on the composition of panallergenic structures that we found in fruits and vegetables. There's uh, similar allergens in the other fruits and vegetables. These factors can increase or decrease the level of allergens. So it's not only one direction. Especially battery one homologous allergens and lipid transfer protein have been studied in detail. Um, some isoallergen and isoallergen composition have been linked to clinical reactivity and it would be interesting to follow these, these results and these studies. And from these studies we can take that the range of natural variability and the knowledge about the biochemical pathways, as much as we know those pathways right now, of allergen translation may form a basis for hypothesis-driven studies. With this picture of Frankfurt, I'd like to acknowledge the co-workers and, and colleagues from Paul Ehrlich Institute and the other institutes and everyone who participated, especially here in the Bull study, and I'd like to uh, thank you for your attention.